If you do any kind of email marketing, then you are probably paying attention to a important stat called open rate. You're looking at your Kajabi or ConvertKit or MailChimp backend and wondering, how come not 100% of the people are opening up my emails? How come it's only like 30% of the people opening my emails? Is email marketing a waste if only 25, 30, 40% of the people that are on my list even open the emails? Shouldn't I just post on social media instead to get the word out? (laughs) No, friend. Social media can't hold a candle to email marketing. But let's talk more specifically today about those unopened emails and how they are actually very, very powerful. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 95 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more to the things and people you care about. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Pumped to hang out with you today. Hey, thank you. Thanks for watching. If you're on YouTube, thanks for listening. If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you podcast this show, it means a ton. You are a committed student when you hang out there uh, listening for 30 minutes at a time. Uh, It kind of weeds out all the people that just sort of like are on the fringes. So I know you're serious And if you've been following the show, then you know I try to deliver immense value for the entire episode. I'm not here to waste your time, and I'm not here to just mess around. I'm here to give you the good. So we're going to dive in today and talk about a very important concept, which is are all those emails I'm sending a complete waste if most people aren't opening them? It's a big misunderstanding, common misunderstanding when it comes to email marketing. So I want to break down something really, really helpful that I think will change your perspective and give you a lot more confidence as you continue to use email marketing. Speaking of email marketing, I want to give you a gift right off the bat. If you are trying to create passive income, you got a course, you got a membership, you have some kind of coaching, and you want to be able to promote that automatically inside your email funnel. So when new people subscribe to your list and they're excited they found you, the pre-written set of emails that deliver your product or service, if you need help writing those emails, I wanna give you a template you can use. It's my five-day product pitch email sequence. You can use this in your funnel for evergreen stuff. You can use this when you're actually doing a live launch. You don't have to just use it for automatic evergreen stuff, but it's a simple five-day sequence that focuses on giving immense value first before pitching, and it's a real natural way to connect with your audience, add a ton of value, over-deliver if they're new in your funnel, and then naturally transition to your product, and they can see if it's a good fit for them or not. It's super simple. I've used this five-day sequence sort of framework or format to sell hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of product. It's a really, really cool platform to use or framework to use if you haven't already used it. And you could tweak it. You could, Like I said, it's a platform to jump off of. You could tweak it, make it seven days. You can change some of it, but if it's a great starting point for you, it's free. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash five days. That's the number five days, D-A-Y-S. grahamcochran.com slash five days and get my five-day product pitch email funnel. You can sell whatever you want in your evergreen funnel all by harnessing the power of giving. What a concept. It works really, really well. It's super, super fun. All right, hope you grabbed that download. Uh, Let's dive into this real quick. This will be a pretty to the point episode. Here's the stage I wanna set. Because I I coach a lot of online business owners and the muscle for our businesses is email marketing. Hands down, the number one driver of all sales on the internet in any business, brick and mortar, info product, whatever, is email marketing, okay? It's not paid ads. It's not social organic. If you just look at the data, it's email marketing. That's what drives sales. Now, paid ads and social media presence and all this stuff is is doing something. It's part of the plan, but what gets people to buy is direct marketing to their inbox, okay? It's, it's old school, but it's, it's the current reality and it will be for a long, long time. People are just comfortable buying through email. Uh, they're used to seeing their favorite, uh, brands pop in banana Republic gap home Depot has a sale, uh, whatever it is that you get an email and you're like, Oh, there's something new for sale or it's on sale or there's a new product coming out and you buy. I mean, that's just what we do. We click over to the site and we buy. 
So for your business, email marketing is huge. You want to leverage email marketing so that you actually drive sales. So what we want to be doing is not just selling all the time an email, newsflash. You want to be adding value when you send emails. So if you're not promoting something, what do you do in between? Do you just not email your people? No, that's not it. You should never just email when you want to sell something. You should be emailing every week to your list. Just, just so you know, bonus tip. If you have nothing to sell, then just email your latest podcast or your latest YouTube video, your latest blog post, or just email something really helpful or cool concept or some cool story that you, that, that describes something that happened in your life that's a, a lesson you can teach. Doesn't matter what it is, but pop in their inbox at least weekly and add immense value for free. This does one of two things. One, it reminds them that you have a ton of value to offer. And then when you do have a product to promote or a live event you're doing or a book you're launching or a workshop you're doing, you wanna invite them to, they're more likely to engage with you because you've stayed in their world, okay? So you wanna be emailing, but here's the problem. People say, Graham, I'm looking at my data. I'm in like Kajabi and I send a bunch of emails and it looks like my, my average open rate is 31%. So that means 69% over two thirds of the people aren't opening my emails. This is awful. What, what am I doing wrong? First of all, you're likely not doing anything wrong. 30% is actually a really great open rate for most email lists. Most big email lists are getting 10, 12% open rates, if you wanna know. So if you're getting 30%, congratulations. But still that number feels wrong to a lot of people. And it feels like my subject line's not good. Uh, do people not care? Are, are my emails going to spam? Like what's going on here? Um, I want to just walk you through three simple reasons why unopened emails aren't a waste. Because that's the, the point I'm trying to make here. The case I'm making is that unopened emails aren't a waste. First of all, you got to understand that not everyone's going to open your email for a lot of reasons. One, a lot of people are like me. They don't check their email regularly. <laughs> so I'm pretty bad at personal email. I, I maybe check it once a day if I'm lucky, um, but I don't check frequently. So I'm, I'm a, a good example of someone who might not see your email today and I might not open it. Or I might not open it for a week or two. So if you're looking at open rates the day after you send an email, it's not gonna reflect my open if I do open it or someone like me. So some people are busy. They don't check every day. Um, and sometimes it does go to spam, right? That, it's inevitable. Your email marketing tool, whether it's MailChimp or ConvertKit or Aweber or Kajabi, they're constantly working and improving email deliverability. And it's hard because there's a lot of email platforms that people get their emails and they all have their own spam filters and rules. And so there's just a lot of things that these tools are having to do to make sure that your emails get delivered because you're not sending spam. Because if you do, that's, that's wrong. You shouldn't be sending spam. You're sending value. So it's not a spam message. It's something that they signed up for. Um, but Certainly, that's a reality that it could go to spam. And then certainly, some of your people will have opted into your list. Maybe it's for a free guide or a freebie. Maybe they were interested in your subject for a while, your topic for a while, but then they're not interested anymore. I've had plenty of people who are on my Recording Revolution list for years, and they haven't opened an email in a long, long time because they're not making music anymore or as much as they used to. Or they learned what they needed to learn, and they no longer really need my content. And that's okay. That's okay. You need to be able to... Make peace with letting those people go. Those are just some realities surrounding email. But if you're the person who's like, Graham, I'm getting 20% or 25% open rate or 30% and I feel like something's wrong or I feel like email marketing is a waste because most people aren't seeing those emails, stop, stop, stop. It's not a waste. There is some powerful stuff happening with unopened emails. Let's walk through three reasons why unopened emails aren't a waste. In fact, they're very powerful. The opposite of waste, so critical. Number one, when you email your list, whether they open the email or not, you stay top of mind, okay? Excusing the emails that go to spam, which it's inevitable that some will go to spam. But again, your email providers are working really hard at improving the deliverability. So a lot of your emails, most of your emails are going into their inbox. They're just not opening them all. But Every email that goes into their inbox for the split second that they see your name, your subject line come through, you are staying top of mind. This is no different than you showing up on social media and people scrolling through their feed, 
and they see your latest post, even if they don't engage with it or really pay attention, they're reminded that you exist. Very, very important, okay? There is gonna be a huge number of your people who don't open a lot of your emails, but who still really like you, and they're just busy right now doing stuff. And maybe they're not at a place where they're ready to engage with your material or they're taking a pause or it's not that intentional. They're just, they have a lot other a lot of other things on their mind that are more pressing. But they see you. They remember you. They know you're there. If you weren't emailing them, you would fade from their memory. Email marketing, even unopened emails, are just as effective as open emails to stay top of mind. So let's assume you send out emails to your list of a thousand people. And let's assume 10% of those emails go to spam for whatever reason. Somebody entered an incorrect email address and you have a single opt-in email or uh, there's a bounce issue or some keyword is triggered by some random Yahoo account or something. I'm picking on Yahoo uh, that puts it into spam. So let's say 10% go to spam. I don't know. But 90% are delivered and you're getting a 40% open rate. That means 50% of your emails, 10% spam, 50% are going unopened, but are showing up in their inbox. That's 90% of your people seeing you. More than twice as many people that opened your email still saw your email come through, even if it's for a quick glance, and they're reminded that you exist. This is just good old fashioned like billboard ads, right? You drive down the, the highway, there's a billboard for Coke or for whatever, it's, you know, you see it, you're not drinking a Coke. You don't need a Coke right now. You can't even click over on this billboard. You can't slap the billboard while you drive by and have a Coke delivered to you. It's, it's kind of pointless old school advertising, except that it's brand awareness. It's brand dominance. It's the being everywhere strategy. It's the, oh yeah, Coke. Oh yeah, Bud Light, like whatever. It's like all over, all over my city. I keep hitting my microphone. All over the city, right? You see it, you're like reminded of it. That does something. It's really hard to track, really hard to quantify. Same thing with unopened emails. You being in their inbox and them not engaging with it is better than you not being in their inbox and them seeing someone else's emails and someone else staying top of mind. So just know every email you send, even if it never gets opened, you are staying top of mind, which is really important for your brand, which, and I have a story for this in a minute, if down the road someone starts to engage with you again, you stay top of mind for so long, even though it's been a long time for them to engage with you, it feels like they've always seen you every single week. You're consistently delivering, and now they're ready to engage with you. Okay, reason number two, unopened emails aren't a waste. Ongoing branding, okay? Similar but different. Just by them seeing your name pop in their inbox, they're staying, you're staying top of mind. When you send an email, whatever your subject line is, because that's all they're going to see, they may see a little preview text depending on what email platform they use, but whatever your subject line is, that's ongoing branding for you. Like ongoing opportunities to remind them what you stand for, what you stand against, what value you bring. So for example, you might get emails that the subject line looks really good, but you just don't have time to open it or time to deal with it. Um, or you think that might be interesting for you down the road. So I, I have students of mine who save my emails. They haven't even opened. Like, oh, that looks interesting. And they save them, which I view as a huge honor that they think even from the subject line, it looks worth opening down the road. But what am I doing with each subject line? I am cultivating a brand. I'm letting those people know this is what Graham's all about. This is what being subscribed to my list is going to do for you. So it's not just, hey, remember I exist. It's here's what I'm doing every week to help you. So if you have an online business or have wanted an online business and I show up in your inbox every single week and you don't open my emails, but you see I'm sharing five types of emails you can use to sell your products better. I'm sharing three ways to work less in your business, but also increase your revenue. I'm sharing a five-day email funnel you can implement today that pitches your product using the le leveraging generosity. You just see these subject lines pop through. 
you're reminded, ooh, Graham is all about some really cool stuff. Or, you know, if you're not interested in that stuff, you're going to move on, like I said previously. But it's ongoing branding about what you're about. You're adding goodwill. It's, it's credibility. It's just reminding people of how awesome your content is. And they don't have to open the email to be reminded that you're awesome. In fact, a lot of times people will get an email from you, see the subject line, go, that looks cool, not open the email, but then the next day they log on to your website or they check out your podcast or they go directly to your YouTube channel. They don't even go to the inbox. It's just like a reminder to then engage with me elsewhere. That's fine. You don't have to open my email. I don't care. I don't live and die by open rates, right? Open rates don't pay my bills, right? Open rate is an important indicator of whether I'm connecting with people, but I don't need the open rate. What I need is you to engage with my material and content and stay engaged with me so that when I do promote something, you might buy it because you trust me, you know me, and you've gotten value from me. See the difference? So an open rate doesn't tell you the whole story. It doesn't tell the whole story because you are still branding yourself with every single email that drops in. That's why subject lines are so important. A, that's what gets people to open is a subject line, right? But B, even if they don't open, it tells people what you're all about, what you're up to, what value you have to bring to the table. It's, it's a sales pitch for something free, but it's like, hey, this is why I'm valuable. This is why you should consider opening my emails in the future. It's okay you didn't open it today. It's okay you haven't opened one in 90 days. It's all right. But I have value to bring. I have value to bring. So pay attention. Maybe next week, you might want to open. See that? So again, all of your emails are important because you stay top of mind and it's ongoing branding and positioning for you. Now, the third reason unopened emails aren't a waste, and this is really, really critical, you gotta understand, it's not always the same people opening or not opening your emails. So let's assume you have a list of 5,000 people. Let's keep the math simple because I don't wanna think today. We have a list of 10,000 people and you have an average 30% open rate for your emails. You know, Sometimes it's 32%, sometimes it's 29%, but you're averaging 30% open rate on your weekly emails, okay? That means 3,000 people are opening your emails each week. Those are not the same 3,000 people each week. It's not that 7,000 of your people just stopped opening your emails and you just have a, a loyal few, 30% that always open your emails. That's not the reality. Email open rate is a statistic that only tells you one thing, how many people opened your email. It does not tell you, are these the same people that opened last week's email? It does not tell you, are these all new people? It does not tell you what blend of people that didn't open last week's, but did open last week's. You have no clue. And I guarantee you, it's a variety. Just think about how you interact with people's email lists, how, maybe how you interact with mine. Do you open every single email I send? Probably not. Do you open some and then not open others? Probably. That means that 30% open rate, if that's your average, it could be as high as double that. You could have 60% of your people engaging with your emails, but it's rotating who they are. Do you see the difference there? That's huge. That means that even if you get an average of 30% to open it each week, you could be still having your emails read by 60, 70, 80% of your people, possibly 100%. Not likely, but possibly. Very different. If there were a stat that told you the percentage of your list uniquely that engages with your emails, that would be a little bit more helpful. So maybe they're saying, look, 70% of your people actually open your emails, but it's not the same percentage each week. Each week, it's only 30% open rate, but 70 or 80% of your people are opening your emails. I feel like that would be a more helpful statistic. And if any email marketing platform is listening and you, you can offer that statistic, that'd be great. I'd love to know that. Or if that already exists and I don't know that, please, somebody tell me. That'd be cool. But you have to remember, it's not all the same people which is one argument to be made for not just scrubbing your list blindly for people that don't open any of your emails. So I, I'm, I'm hit or miss on this. I'm a proponent of scrubbing your email list, meaning having some filter that every once in a while, maybe twice a year, once a year, you unsubscribe a big group of people who have not been opening any of your emails, okay? But even when I do that, I only unsubscribe people who have not opened a single email in a certain period of time. As long as they've opened one email in a certain period of time, it could be 90 days, it could be six months, it could be a year, whatever you want. As long as they've opened at least one, I'll say they're engaged. Because again, they're not gonna open each one. 
but I just want to make sure that they're still caring a little bit. But there's something to be said about keeping people on your list even if they're not opening all your emails because they might one day. And there's a line to be drawn here, but let me tell you a story that illustrates this point. One of my sort of online business heroes, mentors, is Ramit Sethi. Okay, he runs two websites, IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com, which started out as a personal finance blog and then grew more into personal development and online business and all that kind of stuff. And then he launched GrowthLab.com. He's a cool guy. I've taken a bunch of his courses. I've been able to be interviewed by him up in New York. And uh, I've been able to contribute a chapter to one of his eBooks. And I've guest posted on Growth Lab maybe four times or so, uh, teaching some content over there, which is a really cool honor. He's a great guy, really sharp, runs two really slick and powerful businesses, and he's a great example of add value first, monetize later. Some of the best emails you'll ever see really, really look up to the way he runs his business. A lot of integrity. Well, I found Ramit way back in 2006, a year or two after he started his blog. Maybe that was a year he started his blog. Um because I was really big into personal finance. I was a year into my journey of figuring out how money works and I was learning about investing and I was learning about uh, real estate. I was learning about all kinds of stuff and automation and all that kind of stuff with your finances. And so I was reading all the blogs and there was a lot of personal finance blogs that were popping up in the early to mid 2000s. We had a big stock market rally and real estate was big. And there's just a whole group of people that got big on blogging about personal finance. It was way more interesting than actual personal finance books at the time. Ramit's was one of them, but his was way more interesting than everybody else's because he was funny, snarky, and seemingly more honest. So I started following his blog for a solid year or two, consuming everything, loved it, got a ton of value out of it. And I just read his free stuff. I don't even know if he had anything for sale. He might've had one or two for like money-saving tips subscriptions that you could pay for. But I was like, nah, I'm just gonna read your blogs. Then I kind of moved on and he started talking about like getting a dream job and interviewing techniques and that kind of stuff. And I wasn't interested. Um, so I stopped opening his emails from time to time and I stopped reading his blog posts and I kind of moved on with my life. And then my life changed dramatically in 2009 when I lost my second job in the, in the year during the global recession, started my first online business. And all of a sudden, now I'm an entrepreneur and I'm f trying to figure this out. And then one day in 2013, so seven years after I joined Ramit's email list, keep that in mind, seven years later, I get an email from his because I kept seeing his emails kept the, the first two things were happening. He was always top of mind because I saw his emails every week and he was always branding himself because I saw how his brand changed. Even though I didn't open a lot of his emails, I saw his brand change from personal finance to personal development to entrepreneurship and online business. And I saw an email come through talking about how to scale to six figures. Now, at the time I was already making six figures in my business. I was four years into my business. I was doing multiple six figures at the time, actually. But this was the first time his email started to speak to me in my new season of life where I was running a business. And I was like, oh, well, Ramit's got a really successful business. I know that. I see some of the stuff he's talking about. He's got some material on how to grow your business. I'm curious to know what he's going to talk about. So I opened that email. And he had a really helpful strategy he was sharing. And then at the end of that email, he mentioned he had done this live in-person workshop that cost a lot of money, but he had filmed it and he packaged it up and you could buy the recordings of the workshop at a fraction of the price. It was still $2,000, by the way. But I was like, Ooh, I'm really curious. To, I, wanna, I wanna learn some of those things that he's talking about in that, in that, that course. I had never bought a $2,000 course at that point. I'd only bought books. And so I spent $2,000 a little reluctantly with him uh, bought this course. Great story is I, I took one idea from his course and in the next 30 days implemented on a new product I was launching. And that one idea made me an additional $15,000 that I would not have had had I not implemented it. So it paid the course back. What is that? Five times, seven times in uh, the first 30 days. So I was like, oh gosh, yeah. Education is worth it, especially when you're in business. So all you need is one good idea. So that then I got on you know the train of like buying all his material and other people's material. But my whole point is I've, I've since spent tens of thousands of dollars with Ramit. The point of this story is email marketing works. He collected my email address in 2006, but because his emails kept showing up, he was top of mind. 
He kept branding himself over time, even though I didn't open a lot of his emails after the first year. So let's say the first year I opened all of them, years two through seven. For a six-year period of time, I probably wasn't opening many, if any, of his emails. But I was still on his list. All of a sudden, one email comes through that speaks directly to a pain point I have, speaks directly to a desired hope and dream that I have. And now I'm paying attention. I open it. I follow through the call to action. I spend $2,000 with this guy. Now, social media could maybe do that. Retargeting ads could maybe do that. But adding value through email is the most direct, cost-effective way to stay top of mind, stay branding. And remember, not it's not the same people opening your emails. He had a series of years where different people were opening his emails. I was still on the list, but then I started to open some seven years later, and then they were speaking to me, and then he made lots of money off of me. His emails were so good that for seven years, even if they weren't on a topic I really needed help with, I still didn't unsubscribe because the subject lines were enticing, they always provided value, and I was always curious to see what he was gonna send next. That That is something, I mean, and you should go get on his list and, and sort of learn from him as well. That is something that has stuck with me to this day of, wow, he continued to provide value every single week that I never was bothered by his emails. Even when he launched something and promoted something, I never felt like, ugh, I gotta unsubscribe. I just felt like, huh, that's not for me right now. But his emails are really valuable. I'm sure there'll be one for me down the road. And sure enough, there was. So I share all this to say, email marketing is so important and so powerful for you. Never fall for the myth of, ugh, only 20% of the people are opening my emails. This is a waste. Email open rate does not tell you the whole story. You could, in theory, have 100% of your emails being opened at some point by some, everyone on your list, but it might just be a rotating crew of who's opening and who's not. The point is for you, don't give up on emailing. Make sure you email things that are valuable to your audience and communicate that in the subject line. Guys, some of you need to really work on your subject lines. And I think we'll do an entire episode on subject lines because I've seen some of y'all's and they're they're a mess. They're a hot mess. Uh, so we need to talk about that because <laughs> that's the only thing that's going to get people to open is the subject line. doesn't matter how good the email is. The subject line has to be even better. So make sure you're consistently emailing. Make sure that your subject lines communicate the value you have to bring so that even if they don't open today or next week or the week after or two months later, they know you exist, you're staying top of mind, and they know what value you bring. And they may just open that next email and it may lead to money in your bank account and a customer for life. Now, I wanna hear from you. If you're watching on YouTube, leave me a comment below. Let me know, are you actively sending emails to your list every single week, yes or no? Very simple. Are you actively sending valuable free emails to your list every single week, yes or no? Leave me a comment below. And if you want, Share what is your average open rate on your list. Be curious to know. And you can share your size as well because keep in mind as the email size goes up, open rates tend to go down over time. Be curious to know what your average email open rates are and size of your list if you wanna leave that in a comment below as well. Either way, if you want my five-day product pitch email sequence that you could just use as a framework or template for your own email funnel or promoting whatever you wanna promote, it's based on giving value first and then pitching on the back end, just download it for free. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash five days. It's the number five days. grahamcochran.com slash five days. Or if you're on YouTube, I'll link to it below in the description. And hopefully that'll give you something to play with and make some good money and add some incredible value to your people, even if they don't open the emails. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Have an awesome week. Stay healthy, stay safe. And I'll see you on another episode real soon. 